There is a similarity between the, uh, the expected value formula in the discrete case and in the continuous case. Uh, both are sums. And in the continuous case, the sum actually, when represented as a limit, it becomes an integral. But you see, uh, the general idea is the same. You are sort of trying to find the point where the, the distribution is centered around. You are trying to find the uh, center of mass, so to speak. Um, one uh, important detail here is the expected value of a random variable is well-defined, or sometimes we say it exists when uh, this uh, uh, quantity actually converges. Okay, this sum or this integral, well, these are, uh, uh, as you see, uh, uh, an infinite integral, and uh, in the most general case, this is an infinite sum. If these actually converge, we say that the mean actually uh, is well defined. And in general, we define here the moments of a random variable. For the discrete case, we have uh, k to the power n weighted by the corresponding probability, and we have the sum. And this we call the nth moment. Okay. And for the continuous case, again, we have the values x to power n weighted by the PDF and integrated over the entire real line. And again, we, we say this, uh, we call this the nth moment. And very similarly to the mean, the nth moment exists or is, it is well defined if this converges. Well, you see this will be in the discrete case that would be over the entire uh, real line. That would be uh, absolute value of k to the power n, the PMF. And in, in the continuous case, this would be the integral over the entire real line, absolute value of x, PDF. And if you uh, have this sum or this integral converging, and then and uh, we can say the nth moment exists. Okay, so uh, that was an important statistic where uh, you actually find uh, the value around which the distribution is, uh, well, distributed. You find the center of mass. But how far an outcome can fall, how far can out an outcome can fall from the mean is another important statistic. Okay. okay, so for instance, you have uh, uh, just one point representing the center of the mass of the distribution, but that's representative up to uh, a point. You cannot obtain all information about the distribution by just looking at the mean. You, you, you would like to know how much variance is there, how, how, uh, how far can the actual outcomes uh, go beyond uh, the, the, the mean value. So mean absolute deviation is a measure, measure of that. Of course, uh, you, you do not just subtract the mean value from the outcomes because on the average, that would be zero from both sides. But what you get is the distance that we call the deviation. But of course, it's an absolute deviation so that it's always positive. So you are measuring the distance. So in, in, in this example distribution, remember we had uh, a one over four probability here, a one over four probability here, a one half probability here. And we had found out that at 2.25, we had the uh, center of mass, the mean. So we look at how far the outcomes can uh, be uh, to the mean. And you see for this one, uh, the distance is 0.25. For this one, uh, it's 1.25. For this one, it's 1.75. And now these distances, uh, we will actually weight by their probabilities and add up to obtain uh, the mean absolute deviation. So here we have the distribution of these distances. Okay, so you see with uh, one over four probability, sorry, one, one half probability, you get this distance, and with one over four probability, you get this one or this one. So you actually get its its expected value. 
0 0.25 by one half probability, 1.25 by one over four probability, 1.75 with one over four probability. So you get the mean absolute deviation of this distribution, and this one, not this one. This is the distribution of distances. This is the actual distribution. And the mean absolute deviation turns out to be 0 0.875.